in. <laughs> in. Hold on a second. Processing, processing. Updating numbers. Processing, updating numbers, everybody. Sign up for your free account. Here we go. This new practice model challenge will begin in three, two, one. Click refresh here on the practice models page, and you should see a brand new challenge here, 250403. Click here to practice, and we are going to see a top 100 leaderboard, which will populate as people complete this model. So good luck to everyone. We'll come back and we'll check in on that practice models or that, that leaderboard in just a minute. But for now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say click here to begin and reveal drawing. And here we go. My time is running. Now, we do have this premium speed run mode. We are going to be uh, continuing to refine this a little bit. But just for those of you who, who are uh, working here on these challenges, you can click on this button. And that does pop out the drawing in its own window. So that way you can kind of move the clock kind of put the clock over on your second screen or whatever, or put the drawing on your second screen, however you want to do it. But that way you can kind of move the clock a little bit, and then you can really focus on the drawing itself. So this is nice. It's, it's nice and uh, modular. Um, the clock shows up on there too, but you know, mainly what people want is just to be able to move this so that they can put the clock on the screen and uh, you know resize the clock while they're doing their run. So here we go. Anytime we do a challenge, we want to think to ourselves, you know, what is the, the best way to create this model? And I think that for me, the way that I would create this model is I would probably start here on this upper, uh, this kind of upper section of the model, this, this section here. You know, this nice little base plate here. Of course, we also need to decide where the origin is going to be. We do have the center line symmetric here. And the base plate probably is symmetric, but I think I would, I would opt to put the origin either here or here one side or the other of the base plate. So I think I'll probably end up putting the origin here. So you want to decide, first of all, what your first feature is going to be, what your first sketch is going to be, where your origin is going to be. Usually I start by deciding where should my origin be located, and then I start thinking what should my first sketch look like, what sketch plane is it going to be on, and then uh, what's the actual feature going to look like that comes from that sketch. So then you start thinking kind of through the model, what other features are you going to create? So for a model like this, I would probably create this feature first, extrude it up and then I would create this feature over here maybe do it as a revolve or do it as a, a series of boss extrudes either way I would create this section up here that's kind of hanging out up in space and then once I've got that geometry in place then I'm going to be ready to move on and create the rest of the geometry for the part so I'm going to be able to create this shape here this kind of rib shape this shape here which is also kind of a rib shape I'm going to be able to create these little bosses that are sticking up so that I'll be able to populate those with those holes and then I'll finish off by adding this hole in here and we've got a fillet here on this transition and we've got to fill it here on these corners so you kind of think through what's going to be the order in which you're going to create the features from this model and then once you're done thinking through that you're ready to jump into your CAD system so for me I'm going to be modeling this using on shape let me bring up my keyboard cam here so you can see any of the keyboard shortcuts that I'm using I think I probably lost the music there oh, there we go brought it back I had it ready to go I was thinking about it for that one so let's get into it here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the clock back over. And uh, the nice thing here is that now I can use control and the middle mouse wheel here to drag. So I can make that clock nice and small. So if you are doing some kind of a speed run, you can kind of leave the clock up on the screen there, but make it just a little bit smaller by doing control drag. And you're not going to end up losing the drawing because you have the drawing open in that, uh, uh, you know, whatever it's called, premium speed running mode. Really, it's, it's just going to be called show the... Show the drawing. <laughs> Show the drawing somewhere else. So here we go. The clock is running. We're already three minutes in. No, that's a little bit of a long time. You know, maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll, oh, whatever. It's fine. It doesn't matter. You got to plan it out, right? Even, even though the clock is running, it's still important to plan out your design. So I'm going to say create document. I'm going to call this 25-04-03 standoff bracket three. And I'm going to say create public document. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to the hamburger menu here. And then from the hamburger menu, I'm going to choose to uh, go to workspace units. And just make sure that I'm working in millimeters. Make sure that I'm working in grams. So once I've got that, that uh, geometry, once I've got those settings all set up, then what I can do is I can start out with my game plan, which is to start here on this face. And I'm going to uh, S key. Begin a sketch. End key to get normal, 
S key to create a rectangle. I'm going to create a rectangle here like so, which has the dimensions 70 by 110. And then I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to take this line of the rectangle in this point here, which is the origin, and I'm going to press shift M. And that's the on shape shortcut for midpoint. Uh, so let's see here. Do they have to display the correct mass and just enter the mass? They uh, and now and ju not just enter the mass they know to be right. No, I mean for the speed runs you have to enter the mass. You have to do both. You have to show the mass on the screen and you have to enter the mass uh, in the in the answer. You have to get that purple box to show up and enter the mass there. Um, uh, for the top 100, I think maybe what you're asking FPV Kev is for the top 100. Uh, yeah, I mean we want to make sure that we get it into that top 100 leaderboard. I see some answers already coming in, and we'll go back and look at those answers in just a minute. Uh, but yeah, let's see if we can get those answers into the app. And then if you want to enter it in the YouTube chat, that's fine too. You could always, you know, get it in both spots. So now let's take this geometry and let's extrude this, and we're going to bring this up to 15 millimeters. And there we go. That looks good. And so that's our first shape. And remember, for our second shape, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to create this geometry here. It's kind of upper upper section. Now, I think I'm going to leave it solid. I don't think I'm going to put that hole in that upper section. And I think just because it makes it easier than necessarily creating a new plane or offsetting from a distance, I'm going to do this as a revolve. So I'm going to create this shape here that looks kind of like this. And one thing that I've learned about Onshape that's pretty helpful is when you're trying to create a, a reference to a point from your sketch, you can just take your mouse down and hold your mouse over that point. And that kind of wakes it up so that then you can snap to that vertical relationship. So it's kind of a, I'm going to do that again just because just I think it's such an important skill to learn. What you can do here is you can press the S key, begin the line command. So I'm going to move over here. Whoops. Try that again. <laughs> Try that again. Here we go. So S key, begin the line command. I'm going to move over here. I'm going to move up. I'm going to move over. I'm going to move up. I'm going to move over. And now I want to be exactly vertical to that, that point down there. Well, you notice that I'm not picking up on the vertical relationship, but if I just take my mouse down and put it over that point and then move up, now you can see that I am getting vertical to that location. So now I can single click, move my mouse down to here, single click, and there we go. And so now what we can do is we can S key, we can go into uh, the dimension command, and we can start adding dimensions to this thing. But before we do, what we could do is we could create one more line here and press the letter Q. And that's a construction line. And that way, when we go in and we start adding dimensions, we can create a dimension to that construction line. Then we can cross over that construction line and get what's called the doubled dimension. So we're going to make this double dimension here at 40. And we're going to make the uh, height here of this section at 25. And we're going to make the double dimension to this region here. So double dimension again. That one's going to be a 30. And then the height here to this little upper section is going to be at 5. And then the total height from the floor... So you can always pick the plane down here if you don't want to pick the model. You can always pick the plane. It's going to be 70. And then the um, uh, this is kind of a weird one. It's 15 plus 105 from the back end of the part here. So from the back end of the part, or again, from this plane to this center line is 15 plus 105. Now, really what that is is it's a center-to-center -center distance to the hole that's running through here. There's a hole that's running through the model there, and it's a center-to-center -center distance between those two for alignment reasons. But um, in this case, we're just going to take that 15 plus 105 and use that simple arithmetic in the on-shape dimensioning tool. Odd is in the chat. says, what's up? Just saying hi. What's up, my friend? Welcome. Thanks for joining us here. We're just looking at your, your uh, qualification on the tournament leaderboard. All right, so now we're going to jump into a revolve command. We're going to revolve this region here, and for our revolve axis, we'll pick this region down here. And there we go, hit the green check mark, and those are our first two features. Now, what's nice is that now we can line up our next features to those features. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be creating the, the kind of rib shapes coming from the center outward. So this is why it's nice to not include that hole you know, to begin with, because then we have to go back in and do like a delete face. And, you know, I, you guys know I love delete face. I'll use delete face all day if I could. But we don't necessarily have to do that if we just make it solid and then add the hole at the end. That's generally considered best practice in 3D CAD. So now I'm going to go to the front plane, begin a sketch. So S key, begin a sketch, N key, get normal too. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show 
the sketch from the revolve and that way i can reference any of the geometry from that sketch like that center line so for this first kind of rib shape it's going to be a shape that looks like this it's going to come over come back touch the end point come around with a radius here come down to the, the bottom here come over come up touch the end point come around with a radius here come over like so and then we'll make sure that that line is horizontal we'll make sure that these points are coincident and then we just need to double check some of the tangencies here so like this and this should be tangent press T this and this should be tangent we'll press T just in case we didn't get those and then maybe this point and this point could be coincident so I and then we can do S key dimension and the dimension from the bottom of this uh, support over to here is going to be 45 and the dimension from the support or just the support thickness there is going to be 15. This radius here is going to be 15. And then these two are going to be concentric. It's going to have a kind of a uniform uh, wall thickness. So this will be, was it shift O? Is that how we get concentric? Yes. Remembered that one. And, uh, and then what we can do is we can grab one of these blue points and move it a little and see what's wrong. Because I think that should be black at this point. So it looks like this is not horizontal. So click on that one. H. Boom, all black, that's what we want. Nice and fully constrained, fully defined every time. All right, and we're going to now take this geometry and we're gonna extrude it. So S key extrude, and we're gonna say that's gonna go to a depth of 40. And then we can just press tab, 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 and symmetric, you can press the space bar. And this is gonna be an add and merge with all. So we, we, we're merging those other two bodies or those other two parts together with a bridge. So you'll notice here that if, I, if, if I'm making this new, then we're creating three separate parts here in the tree. If I do that as an add and I merge it, then we just have one single part here in the tree. We're merging everything together. So we hit the green check mark, and there we go. There's the beginning of that bridge. And so now we can again go to the front plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal two. And now for this one, what we're going to do is S key line. And we're going to go to, uh, again, kind of to this kind of center area here, come over with the line, come back, touch the end point, and then we can just kind of come down like so, come down to, uh, to around this region here. And then we can make that radius 102. You can auto dimension it while you're creating it. That can be kind of a nice time saver. This point and this point, we're gonna press I to make those coincident. And it looks like this one is gonna be exactly in line with this kind of upper region of the, um, of the uh, revolve that we created earlier. So we can take these two points and press H for horizontal, kind of make those that horizontal to those points there. And then there's a couple ways we could capture this information from the previous geometry, but what I usually will do is just show that previous sketch. And that way I can easily pick this line and this line and this line from that previous sketch and convert, use project convert. I could take this edge down here and I could convert, and then I could uh, just draw one final line to kind of close it off kind of close off those lines there nice fully defined sketch and it's referencing the previous sketch which is good if the previous sketch changes this sketch will change so s key extrude and we can do tab 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 and this is going to be depth of nine and then tab 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 space bar for symmetric and enter and look at that that is really coming together nicely i like that and so now I'm done with those earlier sketches, so I can just click the hide sketch here. Hide sketch, don't need to see those anymore. If the planes are getting in my way, I can press the letter P. That hides your planes. Just kind of makes it a little easier to see in on cheap. And let's see here. <laughs> GFPV Kev says he listened to the song, the Fully Define Every Time song. And, uh, and... He said that it, it uh, is now stuck in his head. Nice. Can't unhear it now. Very nice. So how's the how's the uh, leaderboard going, guys? Are we getting answers in the leaderboard? Let me know in the chat if that top 100 board is working. I'm not going to look at it till I'm done with my, my model here. Well, let me know if anything's not working, of course. All right. And now for our location for those bosses, looks like it's going to be a rectangle 40 by 80. For that rectangle and we're going to have an offset distance there of this is going to be an offset of 15 to start those bosses and then we could take that geometry and just make it q we can just press q to make it construction okay so that takes care of that and now we could jump into a circle command here and we could say we want that circle to have a diameter of 18 and then we can make the other circles so circle circle and circle and then we can just pick those four circles, one, two, three, 
four, you'll notice that Onshape gives you a little indexer. It's telling me I've got four things selected. So that means that now if I press E, all four of those circles become equal to that first circle. So that makes it really easy for me to know that I've got the correct number of things selected. And then that's going to get extruded up to a depth of four millimeters. So four, enter, enter. And now we are ready to take that geometry and add some fillets. So fillet, 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 fillet. And that fillet is going to be at three millimeters. And we can add some fillets here as well. So fillet. Fill it. This is the one that I think most people are going to miss. So we'll make that six millimeters. Dom broke the leaderboard. Okay, good. Leaderboard must be broken. It shows me at the bottom. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. And so we hit the green check mark there for those fillets. And now we'll finish this thing off with some cut extrudes. Oh, no. One more fillet. Sorry. Fill it. And this is going to be on these. One, two, three. Remember, Onshape does have a select other. If you just kind of put your mouse here in this area, you can press the tilde key. And then you can pick that edge there from behind. The tilde key is that key kind of in the upper left corner. So Onshape does have a select other. So they don't have to rotate the model to get that extra fillet edge. If you want, to, Let me show you that again real quick here. So if I go S key fillet, and then I go one, two, three. And then I want to get this final edge here. I just press tilde. And I can press it again until I can kind of get to that edge. Sometimes you got to move your mouse around until you till it actually highlights. And then you can left click and boom, you didn't have to rotate the model. I think that's a lot easier than rotating the model to pick that extra edge. So we hit the green check mark. There we go. There's our fillets. And now we just got our cut extrudes. So this face here. Actually, let's do this with a hole. So we'll go to the hole command. This is going to be a hole created here. Select mate connectors. So simple hole metric. Select mate connectors. That way we can just pick here on this face. It's going to get it right at the center of that face or the edge. It'll put it at the center of that edge as well. And then this one is going to have a through hole diameter of 12. And that's going to be through. And hit the green check mark. And then we can do another hole here. Use the mate connector option. Get the center of that face. And that's going to have a through hole of 18. Boom. Nice. I like using the hole in that spot because it actually names it in the tree. Saves me a little bit of time of renaming. And so now, now we can just assign the material, 1060 aluminum. So we come over here to our uh, name of the part here. Right mouse button. We say assign material. This is going to be... Two Tall Toby's custom materials, 1060 aluminum, hit the green check mark. Also, it's good to come over here to the name of the part and say edit appearance and kind of make the part look a little bit more like the customer part. Customers always like it when you do this kind of stuff. Makes them happy. Makes them happy, gets you a little bit more business. Win, win, win. Get that to match up there. Okay. And now we can... Now we we already assigned the material, right? Materials from the Two Tall Toby material, 1060 aluminum. So now we can click this uh, this icon down here. It looks kind of like a, uh, I guess it's like a scale, scales of justice. Pick this face here, 530.5. So now we come over here into the app. We type in 530.5 and enter. And oh yeah, we did it. Yes. That's what I like to see, baby. So when you see those that purple box, that's telling you, like, yeah, you did it. Good job. Congratulations. You got it correct. 17 minutes and 13 seconds. Not bad. Not bad. 530.5 is the correct answer. And so we say submit. And now let's see where we landed on the leaderboard. So now we can come down here. Now, this is a cool thing. Since we're doing this live, we just released it. So look at Dom came in 4 minutes and 31 seconds. Never saw the part before. Never saw this model before. Four minutes and 31 seconds. Boom. Answered it and answered it correctly. Validated it against the uh, against the challenge. It's so cool. Uh, Metab coming in here. Five minutes and 46 seconds. Very cool, Metab. Uh, we got Rambros Workshop, the world champion of 3D CAD speed modeling. Six minutes, 41 seconds. Aaron C, 10 minutes, 41 seconds. Perkins, P. P Kieran's from Ireland. Welcome, my friend. 1529 Nikola Tesla coming in here 1713 and Karch coming in 1718 well done well done not an easy model at all uh, definitely a challenging model so anybody who was able to get through it in that limited amount of time you should be very impressed with yourselves but pretty cool that we're able to start using this board now we're going to keep uh, we're going to kind of keep using this board we're going to see how it evolves in these live competitions but i think it's really cool that we're able to we're able to kind of see right away how people are doing as they're going through and trying to finish these challenges so congratulations to dom well done dom and rambros getting 